Hey everyone, welcome to our first in the mirror tutorial series. This has actually been one of our most requested things to get more tutorials out. We've been very heads down as far as getting the upcoming Horizon release out, which is coming soon, writing a lot of code. So we hope you're excited about it. We're definitely still in alpha. We got a lot of stuff to build. If you are checking out the mirror for the first time, we're an all-in-one game development platform like an open source Roblox or UBFN. So if you haven't already, head over to our website to get started to download. And then, so once you've created an account and logged in, you'll see this screen initially, welcome to the alpha, and we're gonna scroll down and just create a new space. So we give you some templates that you can get started with. For example, everything from a desert to Mars, mountains, and we're gonna start with Mirror Metro actually. So this will be tutorial series one. So we're gonna create this, and then this is going to boot up our space. And so we do have a bug right now where some of this may take a little, uh, some time to join, but we're working hard on getting that fixed. All right, so once you jump in, you're going to see that everything is loading. And the reason for this is because this is all streamed, actually. So all these assets were pulled down from uh, the cloud. These weren't stored locally. And so what it allows you to do is, um, well, the mirror has automatic built-in asset management. So you're not having to worry about like downloading all this stuff and then importing it. It's just like, boom, it's there. It's already stored for you. And so here we are in Mirror Metro, and first of all, you'll see that there's a bunch of these tutorial blocks that you'll be able to, that'll give you some good reminders. For example, everything in the mirror is actually in real time. So we could have uh, you watching this video jump in here right with me and be editing this world in real time together. Uh, the intent is for this to be fully collaborative, to get the closest experience to your players at the same time, and to be able to collaborate quite quickly to build awesome stuff. And so if you run through this hallway, you'll see more info about how to create your first space, how to enter build mode, that's by pressing B right here. And then everything in the mirror um, is scriptable. So we have both visual scripting and then upcoming GD script as well. This tutorial will cover visual scripting. This is geared towards, if you've never touched anything in the mirror before, you're in the right place. We also have physics, Jolt physics, which is one of the AAA physics engines used by Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, this gives you some more info on right-click menus, publishing, creating in build mode, and more. And we'll get all into this as we go in more of our tutorial series. So welcome to the mirror match that you just created. You probably saw me switch out of first person and third person, and that's just by pressing C, and that'll quickly swap right there. So as you notice, we just walked through this hallway and we are actually lacking a door. That, so press B for build mode. And so B is, as you saw earlier, the way you can actually build stuff. And so, as I mentioned, everything in the mirror is in real time. So we're actually both building the game while we're playing it as well, which is an awesome concept. A lot of the inspiration from this actually came from Second Life, if you ever played. No one has really done it that same way since, and it's an absolutely incredible way to make games together. And so we're in build mode. So what we're gonna do is go over to the library here, First of all, notice that you have the library, you have my assets, then you have a recents side as well. We'll be refactoring the sidebar a bit, so it's a bit more user-friendly in the future. But this is what you'll see if you're on the current Gravity or Horizon release that's upcoming. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the library here and we're just gonna search for door, because we obviously need a door. Ah, boom, this looks like a great door to add. So we're just gonna drag and drop this in right there and boom, that is now there in world. So really quite simple and so, what we can do now is I just press C while I've had the asset, the object now selected and that focused on it. And so I can always right click to look elsewhere in build mode. So I'm holding the right mouse button here. And then if I click something, I can press C and then that'll focus on that asset here. Another way to focus on an asset is, excuse me, an object. I'm missing that. Uh, quick clarification over here on the sidebar, you'll see that these are assets. And so the terminology is that if something is upload it in your sidebar, that's an asset. And then once it's instanced in world, that's actually an object. So of course there can be one asset. For example, if we pull up that door again, that one asset can be used multiple times. So now, even though we have one door asset, this one mesh, we now have three objects here in world. So I'll go ahead and delete those, but that's just a, a quick example. So I can select this here. Another way to focus on it is just by double clicking in the right hierarchy over here and that'll focus. You can also right click and click focus. You can do a lot of other cool stuff here. So now that we have our door and what we're gonna do next is actually program this door. So open up the scripting tab right here and you're gonna click add script and you'll see 
that you have a choice between visual scripting and GD scripting. And so this will be visual scripting to get you started. If you've never written code before, the mirror is great for you because we have visual scripting out of the box, no code. So you, even if you've never touched code in your life, you can hop right in and start programming the world that you're building. That if you are a bit more experienced, we have GD script for you, which is much like Python if you're not used to it. One of the most user-friendly languages out there, one of the easiest to learn. So it'll help you get started and jump right in wherever you're at with your skill level. So what we're going to do, so we go up to a door, we probably want to, well, interact with the door. So what we're going to do is add an on player interact script block here. And so when I'm modifying script blocks, um, this whole script here, what I can do is these arrows indicate the flow of the code. And so to show you this, start by clicking on player interact and then drag here. And so what we're going to do is add in print notify. If you're new to coding, prints are a great way just to check what's going on, debug, make sure something's working. It's very simple. So the title by default is script notification, and we're going to say, hello, mirror, exclamation mark. And so what I can do is just click this on the flow right here, and that is now automatically running. And so you, you'll see that it didn't actually interact with it. It's just running this print notify block right there. So that won't work all the time in case you're like passing data in, which is a bit of more intermediate topic. But uh, notice that this print notify did work. We can also click on player interact for that to work here. So let's test this out. Hit B again. And so this will take you out of build mode. We're now, well, out of the build UI. We're still technically in build mode for the entire space. But when you go up to this object now, you'll see that there's an interact for E. So I'll press E and I see my notification over here on the right. So boom, our script is working. Pretty easy, nothing too crazy. And so what we'll do now is we'll add some more stuff to this. So let's again, open up our script. And so I go over to the script tag after selecting the object in the hierarchy. There's also a nice shortcut right here in the hierarchy. You can see anything that has a script because of course not everything has a script. So if I select this random wall over here, like this, this wall isn't gonna have a script. It might, but actually we wanna know that real quick by a glance at the hierarchy. So we can just look right here and click this script. And so that'll actually open the script already. And then we are modifying again. So of course that didn't actually zoom in on it. So I'm just gonna double click again and boom, we are back over here modifying this door. So now we wanna actually do the cool part of, well, making this door move. And so what we can do quite simply is just change its position. If you've done any game programming before, you'll notice that this inspector looks kind of similar. We can see what the transform is, specifically the position here. And so if you're new to coding though, uh, a position is comprised of a vector, which has three float values in this case. So we have the X, Y, and Z axis. And that's what you're, what you're seeing with this gizmo right here. And I probably should have touched on this a bit earlier if you're totally new to the mirror. You have three gizmos, <laughs> the three, excuse me, four gizmos, actually. Three gizmos, um, we're working on some other stuff too, but uh, three primary gizmos. You have your translate gizmo. You So you go up, down, forward, um, whatever you wish on the axis. And you'll notice that over here on the right, this is actually updating that position as you modify it. So you can quickly get feedback there. You have a rotate gizmo, so you can rotate this however you want. And then you have a scale gizmo as well. And so we can see that that's scaling right there. And now what's a, what might be helpful to know is we are working on, this is scale, but we're also working on size adjustments. So you'll see it might be kind of confusing that the scale is one, one, one right here, or 1.1. And the reason for that is because it's actually the scale of the imported 3D model that you got from wherever you downloaded it from or whether you created it in Blender, for example. But we, are, we want to work on a way so that all of the units are actually exactly lined up. In the mirror, everything is in meters. And then so you can for sure know, that, for example, if this door is 10 meters wide, then something else, another object like this tree, for example, if that's 10 meters tall, then that tree should, you know, should be the exact same width when it's rotated. So things like that. But of course, uh, right now the scale is one, one, one. So uh, noting that uh, more to come, more info to come in the future there. Let's actually make this door move. So let's go over to here and actually just type in position and you'll see that there's a, a bunch of things you can do with position. We could just set the position, but we'd have to actually get what the new value of the vector is, which is easy to do, but to keep this as simple as possible, let's just make it easy on ourselves, add to position. And so what that'll do here is take the existing position and add a bit to it. And so we can see that we are on the, uh, we wanna move this on the X axis right here. And the reason we know that is because of this red right here. And so, 
What I'll then do is let's say, let's add three meters here and I'll hit save. And so I go to click that. And so see it's trying to shift there. The reason for that is because the way our UX is currently set up is that the object won't move if you've actually selected it. Reason being is because you, you could turn on physics or something, more tutorials to come there. Uh, you could turn on physics for something and then the object would be falling, but you may not want that while you're modifying it. So we'll probably add this a toggleable feature in, in the future, but this is how it works right now. So if I, so that add to position worked. And then for example, if I'm not selecting it, oh, sorry, still modifying. We'll, we'll update that though. Uh, so if I go to add to position over here, um, so the door, well, actually let's just test this real quick. So I go over here, boom. And then so that moved the door. And so we see the door actually went like, way open, which, eh, that's mediocre. Let's make this door actually open correctly. So let's modify this vector from three on the x-axis to six. So it actually opens all the way. And so we see that that's gonna go all the way to the side there. That's good. And then let's make the door actually finish. And the thing is though, we don't want the door to like quickly snap open and close. We wanted it to wait. So we got right here, type in wait. We have a nice block that will cause it to wait. So let's do two seconds on the wait. And so what this will do is just pause the script. And as you probably noticed, anytime you hover over a script, you can just get the tooltip right there. So wait async pauses the script execution for the given number of seconds. That's exactly what we want. Life is good. So let's see, got a little visual artifact there, but no big deal. So, oh, it wasn't connected. All right, so then I'm gonna drag here and go to add to position, same one as earlier. So I can add it that way. If you wanna be even quicker though, you can just select the previous one. Control C, Control V. And now we have this second one there that I just copied over. So what I'll do here is hook this up. And so, cause I copied and pasted the vector amount is the same. Let's just make that a negative six instead of a six. So it'll snap back to the same position. Let's try it out. So we're gonna walk up to the door, opened. Bam, closed. Hey, we got it, we have our working door. And so congratulations, if you got this far, you now have a working door and you can start making more cool stuff in your game world. So of course the door is pretty quiet. That doesn't really make much sense. So let's fix that. So what I did real quick was I went to freesound.org and looked for sci-fi doors. And so this one's sounding good. Nice. All right, so what I did then was edited that in Audacity, which if you haven't used that before, great editor to use if uh, free on Windows. I've used it for game projects for years. Uh, definitely an OG of game development. And so we'll add in audio editing in the future in the mirror, but real quick in Audacity, I just went ahead and trim this. And then what I'm gonna do is upload this into the mirror. Right. So we're back over here and so i downloaded the file and then i did it in audacity and then it's really quite simple to upload it so navigate to the file and then all you're going to do is just drag and drop and then that'll automatically load for you and so if you go over here to my assets then go to audio we'll see that there's this shiny new door sound so what you can do with sounds is you can actually just drag that right in if you want and so this is gonna be um, playing on loop. So scroll down to loop and turn that off. So that's not happening. But uh, nice part about this, just to show off real quick, is that this is spatial actually. So we don't need to put this in world. What we're gonna do is actually have this door play it. So hop over back to this door. I'm running at kind of low frames per second here with the recording. So I'll try to fix that in the future, but apologies for any stutter on the video. So what I'm gonna do now is double click and I'm just gonna type in audio. Now we have very simple play audio clip. And so what I can do here is navigate over here on the left to the store and then right click and click copy asset ID because this play audio clip needs to know what asset it's going to play. So I'm just going to paste this in there. And now that that's there, I can click that button. Boom. Our audio is playing. So what we want to do is let's change this flow a bit so that the print notify triggers the add to position. And you know, I'm actually gonna undo this print notify because we already have like something loading the user. That was just kind of our test first. So I'm just gonna put play audio clip over here on the left, hook that up and then hook that up to the add position. Then I'm gonna duplicate this because we want it to play twice, one for open and one for close. 
So hopping back over here. And so add a position, and let's put this right at the end here. And let's try it out. So walk up to this. Ah, it's beautiful. <laughs> so we have a working door. And so walk up to it, and then you'll see that that thing quickly closes, and we have our nice sound effect. And my, my dude's looking like one of those, like, car dealership wiggly dudes because it's lagging and so some of our physics are being weird so don't mind that but uh we have a working door and that's the fun part here and so with this this concludes the first part of our mirror tutorial series uh, we have a lot more cool stuff to come in the future and for example we're just changing this position on the door but we can actually animate it and so more to get more to come there on the side with tweens a lot of stuff is in store so if you haven't already we'd love for you to start us on github we are fully 100 percent open source with the mit license and we have a great community growing on discord we'd love for you to consider building a game in the mirror check it out uh, have a lot of fun and so with that thank you so much for your time cheers and i will see you all later